Welcome to the Atlas Copco socket selector tutorial video. In this video, we'll be showing you how to set up your socket selector using a PowerFocus SL controller and Tools Talk PowerFocus software. For this demonstration, we'll be using two nut setters. Now, in order to prepare our socket selector, we're going to have to drill out the holes in these different platforms. So first, using a two millimeter Allen key, we could go ahead and remove these by unscrewing them in the back. Once we've done that, they lift right out of place. Now the socket selector works by using this white plate at the bottom. And when it recognizes that you've removed the socket from the tray, you just have a different P-set on your controller associated with that specific position so that you could switch sockets and have the controller automatically ready for the next step without you having to change anything by hand. Once you've selected the sockets that you're gonna use, Pick out a drill bit that allows for at least 20 thousandths of an inch of clearance. And next, make sure that when you're going to be drilling the holes in your socket selector tray, that you do it on the lower half so that you cover the sensor area. If you drill too high, then the socket may not touch the sensor area and you will not be able to use it. Use a pen or pencil to outline your socket on the selector slot. Then using a drill press, drill all the way through. Next, make sure your socket snugly fits within the hole. Now that we have our holes drilled, we'll go ahead and tighten these back in. The next step is to flip it over, and since we're only going to be using one selector, make sure that your termination plug is plugged in. If not, the device will constantly look for another daisy chain set. We'll take our serial cable. Make sure that it's snug right in there. A female to female serial cable is required to plug this in. If you did want a daisy chain, there are multiple options. Not only do we have the four selector, but there's also an eight selector and a selector for large sockets. On top of that, there's also another selector specifically for SL sockets. With the serial cable now plugged into the selector, we'll go around the back and make sure that we have the selector plugged in to either one of the I.O. ports on the back of our controller. Then we could close it up and turn it on. Now that our controller is booted up and Tools Talk Power Focus, we're going to go ahead and connect to our serial controller over USB. Now that we're connected, we'll open up our power focus map. And it's time to change some configuration options so that the tool selector is active. First, we'll open up the controller drop down. Double click on configuration. Here from select source, we'll change the P set, which says off, to selector. Once we have that selected, we'll hit store. We could close out of that now. On the accessories drop down, and then open up the IO bus drop down and double click on options. Now, underneath selector confirm, we'll change that from off to on, and then hit store. We could close out of that. And then on the configuration tab, we'll open that up, and we should see selector PSET for position and that's the one that we have plugged in. We'll double click on that. And now we see a little image of our selector, as well as the number one, two, three, and four, which correlate to the different slots. We have two P-sets saved on here, so let's add P-set one by hitting the add button and selecting P-set one, then okay. For number two, we'll hit add again, and we only have P-set two available, so we'll hit okay. Once we're happy with that, We'll hit store, and now we should be ready to put our selectors to work. And as you see on our selector, we have two red lights. Let's put our sockets in. 
and now we're ready to go. So when I pull out socket one, you'll see the green and red lights turn on. And when I pull out socket two, you'll see the same thing. Let's go to the controller and make sure that we're using the right ones. So I will change my type to two channel. And now P set one pops up. Let's get a closer look. When I take out one, P set one shows. When I put it back in, it reverts to nothing. And when I take out two, P set two shows. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to change between P sets while on the job without having to have any interaction with the controller. If you have any questions about the Atlas Kafka socket selector, please leave us a comment down below. Thank you for watching. If you like this tutorial, subscribe to Flexible Assembly for our product news and updates in the future.